The 24mm is a focal length that's one of the most underrated focal lengths in my opinion. This is a focal length that I started reusing recently and especially with prime lenses, I think it works out really well mainly because you can get really close to your subject with the 24mm and you can still incorporate the background in the story. If you're using telephoto lenses, the telephoto lens kind of just obliterates the background or it closes up too much in the background and you can't even get any context on where your subject is. But with the 24mm, you can get really close up to your subject and also include the background in the story. Now back in the day, I used to make the mistake of using the 24mm as just a wide angle lens to just, you know, capture everything, which works well if you're doing like landscapes or whatever. But at the end of the day, I feel like it kind of creates an uninteresting story. But when you get close to your subject and you create that depth of field, I think that's when the 24mm really shines. And that's one of the reasons why we're using a prime lens with it, because we can get that 1.8 bright aperture with this lens and it works out amazingly. So 24mm is a focal length that I never mess with that much until I got this lens right here. This is the Rokinon 24mm 1.8 lens. And this lens I literally bought just to return it pretty much. I just wanted to play around with the focal length. I ended up loving this lens and I ended up keeping it besides buying the more expensive versions of these lenses. Now there's a bunch of different 24mm lenses you can buy, especially for the Sony system that I'm shooting with. But this is the lens I went with. First of all, I bought it literally just for the intentions of returning it. But because it was so cheap and it's also very light, I ended up keeping the lens. Again, this lens I got for $400, but you can get it probably even cheaper if you buy it while it's on sale or if you buy it used, then you'll be able to get this lens a lot cheaper. But honestly, for $400, you're getting a lot for your money. Now, if you try to buy like the Sony version, which is over $1,000 or the new Sigma versions of these lenses, that one's $700, they're pretty expensive and for the price you do get a 1.4 lens with these lenses but this this lens is 1.8 and honestly I feel like 1.8 is kind of the perfect sweet spot where the 1.8 you get a you know you get a nice background blur with your camera and also you get a very fast lens so you can use this lens in low light situations especially if you're shooting something like weddings for example you're doing a lot of interior shots where there you don't have the best lighting available to you so you do need as much light you can get from your lenses. And now let me demonstrate the light difference between a 1.8 and 2.8. Now the difference between a 1.8 and 2.8 is a stop of light. And a stop of light is double each time. So when we go from 2.8 to 1.8, it's an extra stop which means that we're getting double the light from that. Like for example, right now we're shooting at f1.8 and we're shooting in a dark room as you guys can see. And we're shooting at ISO 3200. Now if we go to 2.8 right now, now we have half the light. So in order to get the same exposure, we would have to go from ISO 3200 to ISO 6400. So that means your image is going to get a lot more noisier just because of that. And as you can see, that's what happens when you go. Now if, we've, if the lens was actually a 1.4, it would be half the stop. So we would be able to go from... ISO 3200 to I guess 2000 or 2500 somewhere between there here let's go back to 1.8 so it does make a difference if it's you know 1.4 or 1.8 but honestly it does the lens would be a lot bigger and heavier and a lot more expensive so just because of that reason I really like 1.8 lenses like for example right here I have the Sigma 35 millimeter 1.4 lens and if we compare that to this 1.8 lens you can see that the Sigma is insanely big compared to this little tiny lens right here so personally 1.4 lenses are not that important especially if weight and size are something that are important to you like it is important to me and with f 2.8 you don't get that much background blur and when you're using a prime lens like the one i'm using right now it's a 1.8 lens it still gives a wide look also pops you out of the background so that's really important with this lens if we go to 2.8 let's switch right now so 2.8, as you can see, we're getting the background more in focus. So I don't know, it just doesn't look as good as we get with the 1.8. I mean, once we go to 1.8, I mean, it just looks 
you know amazing in my opinion you know you just get the background completely blown out but you still you know get an idea of what it is but it just gives you a better context all right all right so let's do a little vlogging test see just see how this camera holds up while you're doing like a little vlogging setup right here. I want to see how the 24 millimeter looks. And we are using a little mini tripod just to like get it further away from me. And we are using the center stabilization right now. And we're going to switch to the active stabilization in a minute. Just see how it looks. It seems to be working quite well right now. But I think the 24 millimeter 1.8 is a little too much. Just blurs the background a little too much. So you can't even see where you are. But now let's switch to active stabilization. Okay, now we're on the active stabilization with the A7 IV. And, I don't know, should be a lot smoother than how it was before. Seems to be working quite well. This lens is also amazing just for using it on gimbal work. This is such a small and light lens. Once you put it on like the, the small mirrorless cameras that Sony has, it works perfectly with the gimbal. So here I'll play some footage right now. Personally right now this is my main gimbal lens just because of how light and small it is and also it does have great macro capabilities. You can come up really close to your lens right here so you don't have to worry about too, getting too close to your subject. With this lens. Alright, now we're gonna do everyone's favorite the autofocusing test. Right now we have it set on the autofocus speed 4. So this is like the average speed right there. And as you can see, it does a pretty good job of just keeping my face focused. But let's go like, let's try to do something crazy. Let's go with slow. So we're on the slow, so this is gonna be the most cinematic looking one. Where it slowly transitions into your face. Let me get out of frame. I'll focus on that. It's actually quite fast, but right there. Now let's try the fast. Let's see how fast this thing can be. Can it keep up with Yak Almighty? Right there. And you know what? It's doing a pretty good job. Now with this camera, I actually haven't had any problems with the autofocus, but I tried this lens on the A7R3 and I actually did have some problems with the lens back focusing when I'm doing photography with it, so I, I don't know. It seems to be doing pretty well, but yeah. if I walk slowly into the frame, yeah, it works quite well. So for me, it passes out of focus pass. I did again, I did have some problems with the back focusing, but that could have been an issue with the camera. I don't know if it was the lens, to be honest, but. It seems to be working quite well. And as you can see, you can get up really close up to it. Like, it seems to be close up focus right there. And I'm pretty much like right up to the lens right there. So that is really cool about it. And I'm not seeing that much focus breathing either, which is quite amazing. Because if you get the Sony version of this lens, the Sony 4, 24, 1.4, that lens has really bad focus breathing. But again, you can use the focus compensation on the a7 IV and the FX30 cameras. But again, that's only two cameras out of all of Sony's cameras, so. But this lens doesn't seem to be having any focus breeding at all, from what I can tell. You know. Yeah, the edges of the frame are not moving at all, which is really cool. So for video work, this lens is quite amazing. These guys, thanks for watching this video. Hope it was useful. I have links in the description for a bunch of different 24 millimeter lenses. The one I'm using, again, is the Rokinon 24 millimeters. You don't have to get this one. This is the one I'm just happened to be using, but I have other options for you guys that you can use depending on your budget. For example, there's a Sigma 24 millimeter 1.4 lens that just came out. That's amazing, but it is a little bit more expensive and it's heavier. There's a Sony version that is also great, but has a lot of focus breathing. But if you get the newer Sony cameras like the a7 IV and I believe only other the FX30 has it where you can do the breathing compensation, it'll completely get rid of that. So that is a great option if you have the newer Sony cameras. But other than that, I have those links in the description and they are flailing. So if you do buy the lenses through those links, you do help out the channel. So make sure to use those links. Make sure to use those links if you do want to get the lens. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. I know I haven't made videos in a while, but I'm trying to get back into it. I've just been very busy this past three months, but 
hopefully I will be getting back into making regular videos for you guys again. But anyways guys, thanks for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.